In recent weeks, months, I've connected with too many women who have been abandoned, many of them out of failed marriages. There's isolation, loneliness, a feeling of being adrift. If you're one of those women, you are going to want to hear the story Avis Goodhart is here to tell, at least in part. Welcome back, Avis. It's been two years since you were here. Yes, and it's good to be back. <laughs> and you have chapters in your life that you didn't tell us. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> we're going to slice the pie a little differently to start today. Okay. Thank you for being willing to do that. Uh, take us back to this desperate woman uh, in, in the end, it would seem, of a second marriage, yes. uh, giving up, yes. taking desperate action. Well, I, I had moved away from my husband. Uh, we had separated, my second husband, and gone to Arizona. And um, I'd come home from work one night, and uh, uh, I was just so desperately alone. And uh, I had family around, but lonely and, and disappointed and feeling very ugly. And I just threw myself on the bed and started crying. And um, I, I decided, no, I'm done crying. And I set off off of that bed and, and sort of unbuttoned the blouse and went like this and thought, okay, I've got the, the name of a divorcee, why not play the game, you know? And I was gonna go out and meet another man and make myself happy. And uh, I was like 31 years old, somewhere in there. And um, God spoke to me. You know, he, he didn't have to. He didn't owe me anything. Is this before you went to the bar? <laughs> yeah, this, I sat on the bed and he spoke to me. And, and uh, uh, you know, I was getting ready. I, I just mentally unplugging from being the good girl, you know? I decided, okay, I've tried to be good and, and look what, Two, two divorces. So God spoke and he said, go ahead, try to make yourself happy. And, and I saw like a video at the same time of, of this woman fixing up a house and with the kids and a man and house beautiful and the man to get bored and another man and another house and another man. And it just went on and on and on. And at the end, there was this old, wrinkled, worn out woman. And it was me. And I, and I, I just, and then I heard him say, you can try to make yourself happy. And I knew that in that moment, it was his way or my way. And you know, life or death, I, I just knew it, you know? Your way was gonna come up empty. My way was gonna come up that old dried out woman, or I could trust him. And, and it was commitment. And I, I, I did, I, I remember saying, I, I thought, Wow, and I just said, with my children, without my children, with a husband or without a husband, I'm gonna follow you to the day I die. And I meant it, and I meant it. And I didn't know until today that at the same time, God was working in your husband. Yes, yes, uh, he was a state away. Uh, he, he had a real severe drinking problem. It was normal for him to drink until the bars closed and then um, go meet someplace else and drink or eat or something. Well, this particular night, he was coming home. We lived in the groves, uh, avocado grove type thing. He was a buyer. And uh, he was on a dirt road, um, uh, managed to get his car, his big truck in, out of gear, and he fell out on the dirt with the door open, just laying there in the ground. Now, he had, didn't tell me this till months later we got back together but um and, and did you hear that they got back together yes God yes restored god this put us together okay, so whew. but but anyhow he laid on the ground and he said his life was just passing before him and he was so ill he he knew he was dying you know he just was very ill and he, he laid there and he just pleaded with god pleaded with god to to help him you know, that he knew he couldn't stop drinking on his own, he, that, and he was just so, so sick. Mm -hmm. And um, God heard him. He, he managed to, to, he laid there, he passed out, talked to God, passed out, talked to God, got back in his pickup and got home. And, and, and it was moment by moment, moment by moment. Uh, he had DTs, the whole thing, but he never 
drank again. How many years did you have together before he died? Ten years ago. Twenty-six years. Wow. And you never what drank. A story. God loves to the guttermost. Yeah. It is oh, so true. Amen. 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 I would have. I would have surely gone out to a bar and met a man and just, you know, played the game. I decided, you know, I've got the name. Why not play it? But don't. Don't. God. God can change your life. God's with you. God will direct you. <laughs> and wow, has God directed. I mean, um, he'll use all that. He'll use all of that. All, all the things that happened to you in your past, if we give it to God, he takes it. I was abused when I was eight years old um, by repeatedly by an uncle. But, but God took all that shame and all that guilt and all that stuff and turned it around. And now when we have girls at the orphanage and most of them come abused. Hmm. Uh, I, you I know, know how to deal with that. Yeah, I, I know how it feels. And, um, and you lost your job as a special ed teacher in Arkansas because of nerve da permanent nerve damage from Bell's palsy. Yes. Cost you your job. But how did God make that a blessing? Oh, well, because they give me two thirds of my salary and I, I, it pays for me to go to a, that's how I support myself on the field. When did you found Go Ye Ministries? Well, it was actually founded in 1997. In 97. Uh -huh. You've been there since. Let's go to some pictures and in these few minutes, update people on the amazing multi-dimensional work. It's not just about an orphanage, if that's not uh, enough. Yeah. Let's take a look. Well, this is a shot of our kids. They've left our orphanage compound, all the kids in the green there, and they're going to our school, which is down the road and around the corner. And that school is now grades one to nine, which is an expansion. One to 10. Oh, you added another <laughs> yeah. year? Oh, right. One, one year more and we'll have the complete because they go to a grade 11. And I understand and one of your graduates is actually employed in the school. She's oh, yes. working back. Oh, yes. Oh, That's yes. great Well, history. that picture they showed just before this one uh, was our kids on the uh, orphanage uh, playground. Uh, uh, it, which we have, it's, it's um, bo completely boxed in and secure because we have uh, uh, a lot of problems with... Uh, Theft? No, well, with that too, yes. They dig through the wall. They literally dig through the wall. I couldn't believe it. We, you know, it's a big compound and they, we have a garage area uh, where we build things and they literally dug through the wall and stole the the generator and the air machine and all the tools and you know it's crazy crazy down there but some of our children have come from abuse situations and people try to get to them to change their testimony this type of thing oh, so that's why we have to be very careful for them coming and let's go. go back more show and tell here. Computers. Now that's, yeah, that's uh, at our school. Uh, our kids learn English. Now the school is more than just our our children from the orphanage. We have uh, people from the the area come in, and they're learning uh, uh, English and computers, and uh, it's a it's a good school. Now, Avis, I understand. News is that you are turning the school over to Peruvian Christian teachers yes. with a proviso. Yes. that your children in the orphanage can attend free for three years. Yes, well, if we up to 50 kids a year, we don't pay tuition, we pay for the books and all that other stuff. But it also frees me up because I was the principal for four years. Exactly. And uh, so now the teachers that had taught with me over the years and they're Christians formed a co-op. The good deal is when I own the school, I'm under the uh, auspice of, or, or the, the pay, pa, uh, pay plan of the government that is very expensive. I mean, they look at me like I'm rich Coca-Cola company or somebody, you know? <laughs> so I, we have to pay retirement and severance pay and two vacations a year and blah, 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 blah. But as an owner operator, the teachers are on a whole total different paying plan. So the school is, is making it. On, on their pay plan, it can survive. I, uh, we were about to put in $30,000 a year just to keep the school open. So this is so, a really wise decision. Let's go back to the pictures. Our time is ooh, going quickly. Ooh, this is right near our, our dump. This is a house of uh, Flo, the lady in the red shirt. And uh, it, she has a dirt floor and as you can see, cardboard and, and no bathrooms and no water. And 
Uh, the water's uh, every three blocks they have a, a hydrant, and but there's only water there uh, on a few hours and uh, uh, certain days a week. In fact, it's even less now. And uh, we're having a, a Bible study. Well, we're using one of Joyce Meyer's books, and we're teaching through it. And this is outside, right outside of her house. There's a pilar where they get the water. We have a children's ministry in the area too, a, a really big one. And we go out every week. The lady in the white is actually here in the studio with me. Um, she lives down in um, Pecos Mayo, six months out of the year and translates for me. That's the and, city. Yeah, Pecos Mayo, Peru. Yep. Now, do we have another slide? Yes. That shows a man who was very much impacted two years ago when <laughs> you were on the program. Yes. Tell us about Bruce. Well, uh, I, when I was on Huntley Street, he saw the program and he just loves children. Now, he lives in B.C. On a ranch. On a ranch and uh, very much a um, uh, self-contained man in, in, on that ranch. But he called and got in touch and uh, wanted to come down and work with the wee lads. So he's <laughs> a full-time volunteer with yes. Kogi Ministries. Yes, he is. And he's put a lot of money. And I, I you know, God knows what we need. He knows. I don't know if you remember two years ago, I you was worn out. You, you were worn out and you needed, you were making bras. You yeah, needed we a special gonna, machine to yeah, size them. Yeah, yeah, we had Life problems. Skills. And Joyce Meyer sent me off to have a rest. I don't know if you remember that, but uh, for three months she paid uh, $5,000 a month so I didn't have to come up with as much money to run it. Anyhow, God sent that and also sent Bruce. And he's been there ever since. And, and he, my brothers had to quit because of health problems. He keeps the wells going. Bruce is a, a, a professional plumber, industrial plumber. Uh, keeps our pumps going. He guards the place at night. He, he loves the kids. He taught English in the school a whole year. Um, he drives the combi because there's only two of us can drive. So, you know, God knew what I ne needed. And there's a growing church down there that you pastored for three years. Yes, Again, you're turning it over to the nationals. Yes. It's the way it works best. If people want, who knows, God may be calling somebody yes. else to yes. Peru. Yes, come on, on down. <laughs> um, what is your website? Uh, it's www.goye-ministries.com. Fantastic. Yep. Well, maybe the next time you visit, you'll have, you will have more stories. And oh. it may involve someone who's watching today. Oh, that's right. <laughs> God bless you, Avis. Thank you. What a story. We'll be right back.